Welcome to the Momxiety Club podcast. I'm your host, Tori Levine. Momxiety is a real thing for every new parent. And when you add in a chronic illness, food allergy, or other challenging circumstances, it can become downright isolating. And that's why the Momxiety Club is here for you. Each week, we'll discuss all things motherhood. So join me and let's get rid of this Momxiety together. So let's talk about when you have things planned because you are anxious, like type A-esque OCD, uh, possibly some ADHD in there as well. And then you finally feel like you got stuff together and life goes and throws you a curveball of sick kids or no sitter, the sitter's sick that day, or they can't, kids can't go to childcare. Um, how do you handle that? That is a lot. And that can take you into that crazy downward spiral. If you hear, I have my little guy behind me here and he's playing, but that can like send you down that spiral of, uh, well, what's the point? Why am I going to do this stuff? You know, why did I think I could do these things? And back and forth. And plus, you know, if you are trying to run a business, not trying, if you're running a business, you know, there's a whole lot of other extra pressures that are on you there too. And that's where I'm coming from right now, where I feel like the first hit was when I lost the only sitter, um, that I trusted for the time being with COVID and everything else to be with my kids. And so that threw me into trying to figure out how to run a business without childcare again, which is how I started, but it was a lot different now. Um, and then just sick kids here and there. How does that work? Or, you know, spouse being called to work for emergencies or all different things. I was all ready and I had everything all planned out for this past week, which was um, Crohn's and Colitis Awareness Week. And then what happens? One of my, <laughs> Ruben got sick. He had his infusion last week. I did a whole like video thing, which is still being done about, you know, what it's like going to the hospital every four to six weeks and getting his infusion and those types of things, like a day out of our life, um, day out of our lives. And that hasn't been finished. I had a lot of other stuff I wanted to do to promote awareness and be much more, uh, public on social media. And that didn't happen because we, he got sick then, uh, last Sunday. So like two days after his infusion, which used to happen all the time and hasn't in a while, I guess I'm just out of practice. Um, but got sick, then got better. Eli got really sick. I spent, that was a night of me sleeping into, in his toddler bed with him because he could not stay asleep and all this different stuff. And I knew if he came into our bed, you know, there's then how many people do we want to get sick <laughs> is like the question is do you, I, so I tried to go in there and stay with him so that if Ruben came into our bed, he wasn't getting sick again. And my husband wasn't, you know, being coughed in their mouth and everything that I did all <laughs> night long. Um, then finally, you know, that was, I forget Thursday, Friday and uh, Friday night then. So Ruben was out Monday, Tuesday from school, went, got tested at the doctor, was able to go back. Everything was negative. Um, then Eli got sick and then I convinced myself in and out, in and out, in and out that he had shingles, not shingles, sorry, that he had chicken pox. I convinced myself. Then I read about it and it said like the incubation period. This is just because um, over Thanksgiving, one of his aunts had shingles and we were with her and you can, you can't get shingles from somebody with shingles, but you can get shingles or you can get chicken pox from somebody who has shingles, but 
it's not airborne. You have to physically touch the shingles blister, which wasn't happening. And everything was covered, all this different stuff. Because I actually had shingles when Ruben was about two, right between my breasts on my chest. And I had to bandage it up like crazy because he was still nursing. And so I don't remember how old he was actually, but he was still nursing and his hand would go there all the time and he didn't get chicken pox. So like if you, you can definitely be in way more contact. So sorry, I got interrupted. Um, but yeah, so I knew it was fine to be, there wasn't an issue. I even checked with the doctor again, the pediatrician, and knew it was fine. Everything was covered. There was no issue. But just because of that, I convinced myself 90 times that he had chicken pox because they've only had their first shots because Eli's two. And you get your first one when you're young and then the second one when you're four. And Ruben couldn't get his second shot because he had already started on his medication infusions that are like immunomodulators. So he couldn't get a live virus vaccine. So both of them were in the same boat, but they didn't touch anything. Nothing was there. So that's just one of those things like I could have convinced myself it was anything. Of course, I was looking up incubation periods and all this different stuff and trying to see, oh, is this what this looks like? But whatever. So (laughs) it just gives you an idea of if you are convinced about something and then not convinced that you're not the only one. It happens to everybody. And so Ruben was able to go to school for a couple days. Uh, Friday night, Saturday, he started feeling sick again. And today is Sunday that I'm recording this, but, and then Saturday night, just downhill super fast. Both kids were warm again, no real fevers, just low, um, you know, in the 99s, um, Ruben was hitting triple digits, but everything was okay. But then this morning, thank you to my husband. He actually let me sleep in this morning, which was like crazy because I normally just get up and I don't like try to because I don't know, sometimes sleeping in makes me feel worse. But so, yeah, I had tons of stuff to do. Our house right now is a disaster zone because laundry has not been taken care of because dealing with two sick kids and what does like a disaster zone do to my anxiety and my coping? Uh, it just makes it go out the window because I feel like everything is, it just makes me feel like I can't do anything because I visually see, well, you didn't get that done or that didn't happen. So you're obviously failing at running a house and taking care of kids and all this other stuff. But really, I know in the back of my head, I'm not. Um, that's not how it works. You have sick kids, like stuff gets thrown out the window and plans get <laughs> like, there's an upheaval of plans. But yeah, that's just kind of how things have been. And then Ruben couldn't sleep last night because his throat was so bad. He actually asked, he said, mommy, I think that, can we go to the doctor tomorrow? Uh, last night. And he said, oh, well, let's see how you are. And yeah, then Eli last night, I could hear him. I don't know if it was because he was like too congested, but he was asleep and making lots of noise and I felt bad. And then, yeah, Ruben's just not eating this morning. We had a IBD scary thing last night, which has not happened in forever. There was, we saw, there was blood. He actually went to the bathroom and then I know this is TMI, but this is what it's like having a kid with a chronic illness that deals with your digestive system. It's like, um, the poop 
poop uh, surveyor. And I mean, all parents are like that for a, a, a good amount of time. But he said, mommy, there's, there's blood. And I was like, oh, I've been worried after his infusions went from four weeks to six weeks. We've had a little bit of like belly aches, but very rare things are still going okay. And I did just tell my husband like a while ago, I said, I'm a little worried with kind of like, I can see that possible downward trend and then that and that last night. And I don't think there's been anything like that in years, which is wonderful, but also then scary. And there can be these fluke things. He's sick too, you know, you know, that can mean a million different things. Um, but actually surprisingly, I was able to not freak out so much about that. I was like, okay, well, great. Thanks for telling us, buddy. Just tell us again if that happens. Um, and it's more just like the regular cold sickness symptoms, uh, this morning, then my husband said, yep, Ruben threw up. He wouldn't eat. He's really ill. Um, so <laughs> that's where we are <laughs> just passing things back and forth, trying to keep the kids separate, which obviously is very challenging. Um, but just, I feel like being in this, what is going on is some of the hardest stuff because we couldn't get into the doctor. We're going to call and go to the doctor again tomorrow, hopefully, um, to get COVID and flu tests again, because my husband is worried it's the flu now. So yeah, well, my plans of writing a proposal, updating things, for work and, you know, seeing clients that I still see in person, that is, I just had to send everybody a message to say, sorry, I'm, I just, we need to cancel for this week because both my kids are sick and I don't want to worry about passing anything on to you guys. And that's just how it is. So, you know what? Take deep breaths, mama. When... I know. And I was actually just reading something my best friend posted and shared an article, which I'll try to link to in the show notes about, you know, burnout in parents with sick kids, uh, during the past two years. And I was reading some of it last night and yeah, it is. There's so much stuff. It is hard and it is even harder now because of like the stringent things that childcare settings, uh, and basically everywhere is doing, you know, even if they just have the sniffles, you have to go get a test. They can't be showing signs or symptoms of anything. So that's putting a lot more strain on parents having to take off time from work or trying to work from home with their kids and going down that, well, am I paying attention to my kid or am I just paying attention to my work? Those types of things. But I just want to share, it's okay. Plans do go out the window. Everybody's saying like self-care, do self-care. Self-care is really hard right now. I think I either dreamed it or we talked about it last night. We said how like we wanted to go out on a date. We haven't been out on a date in years and, uh, that is trying and just everything. I can't just go, you know, self-care for some people is having time to themselves. Self-care is exercising on their own. Self-care is going and getting massage, getting their nails done. It can be a million different things, but a lot of that is so hard right now when we don't have time. We can't do anything for ourselves because we're taking care of sick kids, the house, business, work, and it is get burned out when you put yourself last, but just having a place to talk about it and like know that you're not alone can be really helpful. Somebody inside the mom's anxiety club said, is anybody else's anxiety just showing up as anger recently? And I'm going to be like, yep, 
yes, that is exactly what's going on um, here too. So that's one of the benefits of having the Mom Society Club community to be able to talk about those things and the support sessions. I know there's Zoom fatigue and everything, especially if you're working on from home and tons of Zoom meetings, but there is a difference when you come to a support session and you just get to talk about you. It's not it's not work, it's not whatever, it's you. You just get to vent. And if your kids there, great. They can come along in and just sit there. That's actually how my last session was. Eli just sat with me. So just wanted to share all that and let you know, mom, you not you are not alone. It's happening to a lot of people. Some people are able to just deal with it differently. Some people it puts into a downward spiral. And the only thing that you can do right now and what we all can do is talk about it and know that this is a really, really crappy time still. Still, this is a crappy time. So I, again, I don't know, another (laughs) running off to help the kids, but just, I just like felt like recording this would be helpful to somebody, hopefully, because then you know that you're not the only one who thinks these ways because that's what's helpful to me and, uh, reach out. I would love to support you. I'm here for you. Um, reach out. Hello at momsietyclub.com. And if you're interested, need that extra support of the Momsiety Club membership, head to momsietyclub.com and you will find information there about it. But yeah, I want to hear what your, how you handle these situations, how you handle having a kid who's sick, kids who are sick the whole family possibly being sick and how you handle, are you feeling burnt out? What are your stressors right now? Connect with me on social media at momsietyclub.com or give me an email and stay strong, mama. Do the little things, do the realistic self-care of taking a little time for yourself of hiding in the bathroom of indulging in that extra cup of coffee in any of those things. And you can do this. I know you've got this and there are better days coming. You are not the only one with momsiety. You are not alone no matter how alone in your worries you may feel. I'm here too. I've been there too. Reach out via email or on social media. Reach out to a friend who has a child who may be facing other challenges. Share that you have anxiety too and just know that you are not the only one. I am here to support you. And the more we normalize and talk about these feelings, the easier it gets. For more information about working with Tori or joining the Momsiety Club, head to join.momsietyclub.com. There you'll find information about Sneeze Proof Your Pelvic Floor course, as well as the Momsiety Club, where you'll get access to two monthly support groups with other moms just like you, as well as exercises and a chat about the monthly theme to help manage your momsiety. The Momsiety Club podcast is not intended to take place of medical advice or therapy. If you are in crisis, call your local emergency number or the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-TALK.